Sam, breathing and very slowly, Sam. Sam, breathing, breathing, just slowly. There is nothing more joyful than the delivery of a new life. Oh, it is a girl. And nothing more heart-wrenching than the fear it might be over almost before it begins. Oh, is she breathing? As she struggles for breath, this is yet another step in the remarkable journey to save Baby Willow. Even before their daughter's delivery, Sam and John Callahan had been through so much. This particular case was the most severe case I'd, I'd seen. The horror started with Willow's 20-week scan and the discovery that the black hole on her tiny right lung is in fact a massive tumour, the size of an adult hand. So here we see, yeah. Ryan, you can see the big lesion yeah. just here, and you can see how it's pushing everything across to the other side. And Dr uh, Ryan Hodges from Melbourne's Monash Women's Hospital can see the tumour. A clump of cysts has grown so voraciously it is crushing Willow's heart. So what were Willow's chances of survival without treatment? Well, with, without treatment, there was no question that, um, that she would die in Sam's tummy. Um, I mean, it wouldn't have surprised any of us if she didn't make it through the night. She was that sick. For the Callahans, life is no longer normal. Not that five-year-old Evie or seven-year-old Ryder have any sense of the terrible heartache confronting their parents. Either terminate the pregnancy or Willow would most likely be stillborn. How do you prepare children so young that their little baby may not be coming home? You don't. Mm, you can't. <laughs> No, we didn't talk about that. That was never something that was going to happen. The baby was always coming home. They have only one hope, an enormously risky procedure never before performed in such a severe case. But there's also some good luck. Dr Hodges might be able to perform it, having recently returned from Canada where he's just trained in the procedure. Do you feel like you're in the territory of experimental surgery, <laughs> experimental treatment? It's definitely, definitely. It's not like they've got thousands of babies like this, mm. so they couldn't really tell us, okay, there's a 10% chance she's gonna survive. Complicating everything, Sam is now becoming critically unwell as a result of her baby's condition. Sam was sick, so I, I was anxious about the risk for Sam by continuing the pregnancy. But the resolve of the couple for their baby, I, I think, put me across the line to, to try it. So going into that surgery that day, to place that shunt into Willow, how were your hands? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hands were fine, but brain was racing. Okay. okay. Now, Sam, this is where you have to really control your breathing. That's it. Now, you shouldn't feel any of this now. The plan for the in utero surgery is immensely complicated. Dr Hodges needs to drain Willow's ever-growing cysts with a shunt so that the pressure on her heart can be relieved. Right. Really important to just have slow breaths. Right. Sam is awake as Ryan guides his needle, navigating the haze of the ultrasound. You want to just line up to that dominant cyst. Through Willow's rib cage and finally into her tiny lung. Yeah, position's great, guys. Yep. Well done. Okay, so just advancing the shunt down now. Yep. A mistake of even a millimetre could be catastrophic. Placing a shunt in utero is particularly 
technically challenging and you have to be very, very focused. But I have to admit, with Sam's breathlessness, that did make me feel nervous that whether this was the right thing. That was particularly hard. In that angle. In that angle here. Perfect, yep. centre of the central yep. lock hill. Um, now we just need to see that it has coiled inside the chest. But Ryan remains steady. He positions the shunt in exactly the right spot. Within minutes, it's draining fluid out of the cysts. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Beauty. Good, Good job. job. Good yeah. job. Good, Good job, Phil. So perfect with the spot perfect we got position. it. In. Perfect position. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So we always knew that whoever it was in there was a tough little Fighter. little person to mm. to deal with having uh, those procedures before it was even born. It's crazy. The first twenty four hours are critical. And the first ultrasound will reveal Willow's fate. It's just whether the baby's alive or not. That's all it is, is day one. Is it alive or not? And not only was Willow alive, but the cysts had all started to shrink already within the first day. Immediately, almost miraculously, Sam's pregnancy starts progressing well, and the family dares to believe that in a few months' time, they'll be bringing home their healthy new baby. Once the shunt went in, that's when you started getting better, and you started getting smaller, and you, and you started looking like a beautiful pregnant woman instead of being <laughs> Massive, sick. Massive, cool. and... <laughs> <laughs> You're still beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Against all odds, Willow has reached almost 39 weeks and Sam's waters break. <laughs> the next worry is whether baby Willow will be able to breathe on her own. And very slowly, Sam. Sam, breathing, 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 just slowly. That was probably the most nervous I've been, I have to admit, just before she was born. Oh, it is a girl! Yes. It is a girl! Oh, is she breathing? The couple's joy at discovering they have a new little girl is tinged with fear. Okay, you got it. She looked very purple and wasn't really moving, and um, I was sort of thinking, oh, okay, I don't know how this is going to go. She's breathing. As much as I wanted to cuddle her, I also sort of wanted her to go to the doctors and get looked at and checked over and make sure that she was breathing. definitely breathing and <laughs> going to be OK. But Willow is in trouble. She needs immediate help with breathing and is rushed to intensive care. I remember thinking, oh, if she doesn't make it, whether we did the right thing or not. While uncertain of what is to come next, John's experience of fatherhood tells him something is very wrong. She wasn't <laughs> making any noise, so I always think that if they don't cry and you know, she's concentrating on trying to breathe, you know, all that energy is going into survival. Still to come. One more twist no one saw coming. The cysts were all back. They were enormous again. Natasha pushed everything, including her heart, to the other side of the chest. And the incredible doctors who wouldn't let Willow go. So was waiting an option? Uh, in Willow's case, no. That's next on 60 Minutes.
so she's breathing but she's starting to struggle a little bit okay. Willow is in intensive care and her tiny chest is heaving, desperate for breath. This is very different to what obstetrician Dr Ryan Hodges was expecting. She was struggling and the cysts were all back. They were enormous again. She needed surgery. Paediatric surgeon Dr Ram Nataraja from Monash Children's Hospital is called in. Not even an hour old, Willow's life is again at risk. What was your impression when you saw her? Um, immediately after birth, the actual cyst was actually expanding again uh, to actually push everything, including her heart, to the other side of the chest. It's the worst news for John and Sam Callahan, and all the family can do is comfort their precious Willow. She's pulling all these strange faces. Aren't you? We'll see you when you're out and you've got rid of that awful cyst. 13 days after her birth, time has run out for Willow. Dr. Nataraja must operate immediately or lose her. So was waiting an option? Uh, in Willow's case, no. We want her in there straight away to get that out because I can't believe she was able to breathe on her own with that inside of her. It was just, um, mm. yeah, it's pretty Sorry. scary. <laughs> we love you lots. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I know it was along the lines, I'll see you when you come out. It's the hardest of farewells as Sam and John leave their precious daughter in the hands of the medical team. But yeah, she just looks so innocent and tiny and to sort of send her off into the operating theatre was pretty difficult. Mm. <laughs> By extending her life in the womb, Dr. Hodges gave Willow's lungs the chance to grow. But even now, he struggles with the gamble he took. I think that was where it was probably one of the highest risks I think I personally have taken with, with fetal therapy. It would have been much easier not to have mentioned it. Um, but I'm glad I did. And so are Sam and John. For 13 days at least, they've held and loved their baby daughter. Now it's an anxious wait to learn if they'll hold her again. What were those emotions? The waiting and the... Fear. Fear. Yeah, because we got her now. She was real. This is Willow. We, we had a name and we had a daughter. And then to see that again, it's like, oh, that's, yeah, real fear then. Yeah. There's the massive cyst. It's just 15 minutes into the surgery when Dr. Nataraja and his team sight the horrendous cyst. So it's just a big, thin wall. And what was the size of that cyst? Um, probably about eight centimetres. In a tiny newborn baby, eight centimetres is a big part. It of is it. a big part, yeah, it is a big part. That's come out uh, quite, uh, quite well. She's going to have enough lung to survive. Yeah. Willow's right lung starts immediately expanding to fill the new space. I just want to go in there now. <laughs> Feeling a bit shaky. <laughs> but the little baby Sam and John greets looks far from well. She doesn't look good. Look at her face. It's all squashed up. There's no colour. 
She looked like she was, she wasn't with us anymore. That's what she looked like. Well, you didn't think she'd make it. It scared the hell out of me seeing her like that. Mm. It didn't. It didn't look good. It looked. She looked awful. Immediately after the operation, Willow did not look like a healthy baby. Um, we knew that she would take a hit from it, uh, for want of a better word, um, but I knew that she would get better. But no one would guess how quickly. This is Willow just nine days after her dramatic surgery. She mends perfectly and is ready to say goodbye to the doctors who saved her. Oh, my. Hey. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello, beautiful. Uh -huh. oh, well. What was it like to hold Willow in your arms? A wonderful moment. And, um, but to be honest, the satisfaction was more to see her in Sam's arms and John's arms. Yeah, that was the best part. You saved your life, little one, these two men. Willow's loud and unhappy reaction to her first bath at home is sweet music to her parents. Yeah, there's no fear there now. <laughs> it's great. It's really, really good. There's a guy to stop myself from squeezing her too tight. You know, <laughs> you just want to, yeah, I want to cuddle her and squeeze her up. You just want to eat her up. Yes. Yeah. I look at her face and I feel like she's an old soul. Yeah, I look at her and think, yeah, you've been on such a big journey. She's been through a lot. Already, yes. A journey only made possible by the unique skills and courage of doctors Ryan Hodges and Ram Nataraja and their incredible team. They'll always be our superheroes, I think. <laughs> you know, how can you ever thank those people enough? You can't put it into words, you can't you know, really give them a gift of anything to, to say thanks for saving our daughter's life. I, I do hope that in six years' time when Willow's in prep at school and is hopefully running around the athletics track, I wouldn't mind a photo. <laughs> is that all you ask for? Yeah, just a photo. <laughs> and will she be running yeah. around? She'll be she... running around, yeah. Yeah, she'll be, she'll be running around. Yeah. And then hopefully John will be running after her. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.